Welcome back. My name is Rebecca. Today, I want to show you how I crocheted an envelope closure pouch to sell at markets. I absolutely love how this design came out. I love the little clasps I found for them, and I am in love with the view out my window this morning. For this project, you will need worsted weight yarn, an H 5 millimeter crochet hook, a canvas zipper pouch, I got mine on Amazon, and the little clasps to finish the closure, or you could use buttons. You will also need fabric glue and a yarn needle to, to do a little bit of sewing. Unfortunately, a little bit of sewing. We're going to dive right into the pattern. You're going to start with a chain of 34, so you have 33 total stitches once you single crochet back over the chain. Or you can do a foundation single crochet of 33 and that should get you started. This foundation single crochet should be roughly eight inches long, maybe a little give or take there, but you don't want it to be too much bigger or too much smaller. Eight inches is the sweet spot. If you decide to chain instead of foundation single crochet, make your single crochet stitches in the back bump of your foundation chain so that you have two loops at the top and the bottom so it looks the same on both sides. That comes very important, it comes in handy later. Now let's dive into the real part of the pattern. You'll chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, skip one, and three double crochet in the next stitch, skip one. And that is the same repeat we're gonna do over and over again. Single crochet, skip one, three double crochet in the same stitch, skip one, repeat. So you'll notice this pattern is in multiples of four plus one. So you'll have four stitches in your repeat all the way towards the end, and then you have one more single crochet as your last stitch in the row to finish it off. And that's the repeat. It's actually really easy. For the next row, chain three, which counts as your first double crochet, and then double crochet again in the same stitch. So you have two double crochet in your first stitch, skip one double crochet of the three that you did together and single crochet in the middle one then skip the next double crochet and work three double crochet in your single crochet from the last row all the way across this row you will work three double crochet in every single crochet except for the first and the last one and a single crochet in the center double crochet of your three double crochet from the previous row. So it'll be single crochet, three double crochet, single crochet, three double crochet, all the way across. And when you get to the last stitch, you'll make two double crochets in the last single crochet. I'm sure that makes sense somewhere, somehow. Chain one, turn your work, single crochet in the first double crochet, then skip to the next single crochet and work your three double crochet into the single crochet. And you guessed it, we'll single crochet in the center double crochet of each set of three from the previous row. And we'll do three double crochet in each single crochet all the way across. So we are gonna repeat those two rows over and over and over again until our rectangle is roughly 10 inches long. So I'm not gonna give you an exact row count. I think it varied for me depending on what yarn I was using. I used three different types of yarn. All were worsted weight, but they all kind of worked up differently, which is just the nature of things. But 
you'll want your pouch to be 10 inches long before we start decreasing to form the triangle of the envelope. To begin decreasing, you need to make sure that the last row you finished before the decrease ends and starts, starts and ends with a single crochet and not with a double crochet. Chain three, which counts as your double crochet and skip to the single crochet in your center double crochet. So one double crochet in the first and last stitch, not two for this first decreasing row. Work the rest of the row the same way you have the previous rows, but when you get to the last stitch, you will work one double crochet in the last single crochet instead of two, which is what we have been doing. Turn your work, do not chain, slip stitch in the single crochet, then chain three. Single crochet in the center stitch of your three double crochet from the previous row. Then continue to the end of the row in the same manner you have in the same repeat. At the end of the row, you will work a double crochet in your last single crochet and you will not work in the turning chain three of the previous row. Each decreasing row is worked exactly the same. Slip stitch into the single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the second double crochet, and then continue the pattern repeat that we've established before. And then the last stitch, you double crochet into the last single crochet and do not work into the last double crochet. And continue working that decrease until you have one shell. You finished the row that only has one three double crochet shell. For the very last row, you'll turn your work, chain five, and then slip stitch in the last chain. You'll chain five, skip everything, slip stitch in the last chain. And that can work as your buttonhole or it will work where we attach the clasp. Now we're going to fold this into an envelope and seam up the sides. It's really simple. Simply fold our foundation row up to the very last row that is the same width as the foundation row so before we start the row before we did the decrease and then either whip stitch or slip stitch up the sides so that it's nice and secure Once both sides are seamed, you'll want to turn it so your seams are on the inside so they're not noticeable. Then pick up a loop in one of the corners of the seams and just single crochet all the way around the edges, across the front, over the envelope, and then work four single crochets into the little loop at the top of the point of your envelope closure and then join it with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made so you have a nice neat finished edge. 
Slide your canvas pouch in to your crocheted cover just to get an idea of the fit. You can at this point go ahead and put a dot of glue in the bottom corner of the cover, crocheted cover, and squish it up against the corners of the pouch so that it adheres nicely. Do not at this point glue the top edge of the pouch to the canvas yet. First we need to put on the clasps. You may need to stretch, twist, and fiddle with it a little bit to make sure the canvas pouch is actually lined up in the cover properly because when I put them in they tended to get twisted, like the covers would get slightly twisted so then the point wouldn't come down to the middle. So fiddle with it, get it laid out exactly the way you want so that when you close it up it is perfect. The clasps I'm using came in these three pieces. The twisty bit and the flat metal bit go together and hold each other together and then the face of the clasp has some screws that you take apart. You'll, you'll see. I'll show you. So first you need to kind of bend open the little prongs like so and I just kind of like placed it, get an idea of where I wanted it to be and um, then I added from underneath the backing to the front clasp you slide the little prongs through the through the two through two of the little holes and then you fold the prongs back down and it is secure it felt really sturdy when I finished at this point you can glue the top of the pouch to the top of the pouch cover and press it firmly in place and leave it to dry for the front part of the clasp first you have to undo the two screws or three screws, I think this one had three, and take the pieces apart. So don't lose the tiny screws. They, they, they disappear magically sometimes, but like really don't lose the tiny screws. You can pull the two front pieces apart now, and you will want to make sure that the really pretty shiny part ends up on what is the outside of the bag, and the boring part is on the inside of the bag. And put it on, it feels like it's upside down if you do it when the bag is open and uh, because I, I did it wrong the first time and I had to take it apart and do it again. Um, so make sure you put it on the right side up and, and like put it in place and then fold the bag closed just to double check that you're thinking it through all the way and not going to make a mistake like I did. So you, you'll want to make sure that your screws for the face plate of the clasp front piece. What are the words? What are the words I'm supposed to use? Are there terms for these things? Anyways, make sure the screws go between the stitches. So kind of fiddle them in place. It'll make the whole thing easier instead of trying to screw them directly like through the stitches. Make sure they go between the stitches. That'll be much easier. Then you just screw the thing back together and it's beautiful. Okay, I did a lot of trial and error with trying to figure out the easiest way to put these things on because I can't tell if you can tell, but I can tell. I really struggled. <laughs> struggled, struggled, struggled. I found out, I ended up realizing it was easier to put the shiny front piece on first because it had these little raised holes for the screws to go in. Again, terms. I don't know what the terms are for these things. Anyway, so I got those all in place and then I put the back plate on and then screwed each one in a little bit and then tightened them all down as I went. But I also spent a little time adjusting the stitches around so that the fabric of the stitches showed all the way around the clasp and it wasn't hidden by the clasp at certain points to give it a more professional finished look. I really hope that made sense because I'm questioning the way I've worded everything for this section. <laughs> I 
Now that the clasp is fully installed, we're going to finish gluing it all together, making sure our ends are tucked, weaved, glued, however you want to end the ends, finish them, make them look super awesome and professional and hidden. I found heads up about this glue. It worked really well with the cotton yarn, but I did try a synthetic yarn and I now, sometime later, have realized the glue does not work as well with synthetic yarn as it does with cotton yarn. So make sure you're using a cotton, cotton blend, something like that, not something that's too shiny or synthetic because the glue doesn't work as well. And we're done! We have a finished envelope closure zipper pouch thing. Yeah, it's amazing. I actually really love these. I am so happy with them. I I know that the glue looks a little bit messy in this shot, but it dries clear and it actually looks amazing. You can't even tell it's there when it's like dried and cured. So definitely wait a little bit for that to finish setting up and they look really awesome. This pattern is actually an adaptation of a pattern that's on my website. The uh, I don't remember the name of it. Oh, Ginter. Ginter crossbody bag. I will leave that in the description below. The dimensions of that bag are different than this one, but it's the same, same sort of stitch and same sort of idea. Just some alterations to make this version quicker and easier to make if you want to give it away as a gift or sell it at markets, things like that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun making it as always, and I will be back with more videos soon. If you make one of these, I would love to see it. You can send me an email using the contact on my website or tag me on Instagram or on TikTok or whatever, you know, it's cool. Um, but like, uh, subscribe, share this video, whatever. And I hope to see you around and have an amazing day and crochet something that makes you happy.